pending Pixar picker. Yeah. With our okay. patent pending Pixar picker. Hey, brother, and welcome everyone to another J versus Ben, where today we are going to be ranking every single Pixar movie into our different tier lists using our patent pending Pixar picker. You got it. Yes. Uh, I didn't know this was our first take and you got it on the first try. Well, thank you. I'm incredibly you. impressed. If you guys would like to go through and sort your favorite Pixar movies with us, you can do so using the link in the description down below. Let's do it. Alrighty, what is it? What is the name of your thing? Pixar. The patent pending Pixar picker. Patent pending Pixar picker. Do yeah. you want to explain it to everybody? So basically, we have our tier lists in front of us, and we have five tiers from best to worst. We're not necessarily ranking them in a particular order, just saying which tier each movie goes into for us. And for me personally, it's a matter of my personal enjoyment of the movie. Oh, that's a good qualifier. Yes. That's a good qualifier. Put that out there. The, 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 curious, the curious thing with this, whenever we've done these in the past, is how much of a bell curve you will have as you sort through. Like, will it be the case that there are just like, uh, like a small select few that are the absolute best and the absolute worst with everything kind of falling arranged into the middle. It'll be tricky to see because Pixar is uniquely positioned as like, has produced so many of my favorite movies. It's true. It's so true. there's uh, that to consider as we, well. We also have a new method uh, for deciding which uh, movie we are going to be discussing. We have our lovely bucket here filled with all of the various names of each of the Pixar movies. There are 25 total. So we'll be selecting a piece of paper with the claw. The claw. The claw. The claw. So we'll pick one out and then sort it into one of our five categories. Our top category is Beyond Infinity. Ah, the second category was going to A plus 113. Get it, get it. The third category is Incredible. The fourth is Anton Ego gives this two stars. And our bottom category is Cars 2. It has turned. Okay. First movie? First movie. You ready? Give us a claw. Okay. It's the most recent. Turning red. Turning red! Turning red! Well, well, well. Okay, so we've got turning red here. Just drag it on up. Oh, maybe do we have the wrong pencils? Who do we have? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha, uh -huh. we did have the wrong All pencils. All right. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. I have placed mine into Incredible. I also have placed it into Incredible. Oh, nice. Right in the middle. Right in, right the, in middle. the middle. Um, I would say, and my big my, my big note when I was putting down everything for Turning Red was that like I almost want to preemptively reserve the right for this to like go up in the future. Sure. I feel like with a lot of the Pixar movies, one of the things that makes them so like ingrained into me is the number of times that I've watched so many of them. That was a big thing for me too. I was like, I've just watched some of these movies so many times. And so many of these movies like defined my childhood right. in a way that literally set up my career later in a way I was not expecting. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. And in addition to that, I feel like so many of the movies that I end up loving, there are like little things or like isms or like sayings that I will like use in my everyday language that just like they're not even supposed to be like the funny punchlines of the movie. They're just things that I have come to love. Exactly. Um, and so I think that Turning Red at present just doesn't had quite the opportunity to be fully ingrained for me. And the other note that I remember I had from the review for Turning Red was just simply that despite the fact that this is, what, what year does it take place in? Like 2000, right? Yes. And so basically the characters in the movie are the age that I would have been in the year that they took place. Right. And I also felt like I didn't end up ultimately like relating to them all that much. There's certainly an amount of whether you are a mother or a daughter or have a daughter or were a teenage girl with a tight group of teenage girl friends. Yes. That I think all help you relate to the movie. Not that the movie isn't relatable in general, but I think all of those things 
really uh, probably make it like slap a little harder for certain people. I would imagine so, I yeah. would imagine so. And in, in a way that I would say is different from like say Inside Out where you have a similarly aged main character who is a mm -hmm. you know adolescent girl who I think anybody could relate to. Right, for sure. Like with Riley. Yeah, yeah, with Riley. So we'll talk about Inside Out later, there for sure. Go. Okay. But uh, yeah, there you go. Maylin still really enjoyed the movie, but at present, sitting at Incredible. There you go. Next up, you can go. You oh, can. Okay. I went first. All right, next movie is Toy Story 3. Oh! Right there. Okay, okay, All now right. I gotta find Can I find it? Up. Yeah. Hang on, oh, hang there's on, hang four. On. Uh, no, there's yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, you ready? You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Beyond Infinity. There's no other. There's no way. There's no way. I love this movie so much. It is my favorite Toy Story movie. Um, and I think it is the perfect ending to a perfect trilogy. And like I to this day, I can hardly think about the moment where like Andy like pulls Woody back from Bonnie without like feeling a little emotional. Like even saying it right there, I was like, uh oh. You know, uh, that's, I it's happening. It. I can it's feel happening. it. Feel it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel the exact same way. I mean, Toy Story 3, I think, capped off this series in such a really, really fantastic way. Like, we followed Andy for, you know, each stage of, you know, him growing up and ultimately going to college. Uh, and I think that the toys relationship, like, with him felt like the core <coughs> thing. And even though, like, Andy's not, like, a particularly big character, like, he is, he is more, like, important because that we know he is important. Right, like his existence drives the story forward, but he doesn't do a whole lot in the movies. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then I think like when you try to then like take Bonnie and have her like drop into the new position, it's like when you know that the baton has been passed, it's like, oh, like, like the story will start again. Like, and that's so fun to think about. Like the toys have survived becoming obsolete and have a, a fresh start. Right. You know, and I, I think that it was almost like, I don't know if we needed to see right. the fresh Did we need start. to see the start? Um, I don't know. But we did. But we did. But yeah, I think that like when we go through, and, and this is like one of those things where I love movies that make me cry, uh, and I think Toy Story 3 does it like six it, times. Oh, it has like three endings in a row, and they're all really good. <laughs> yes. When The biggest one for me, I think, is when Buzz reaches out his hand to Woody like, in like, the incinerator, and you're like, over, man. it's like they're all just like coming together. But then. The, the claw. claw. Let's see it. Let's see it. Okay, ready? Oh, Wally! Wally! Okay, 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 okay. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I said beyond, beyond infinity. infinity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so sure about this bell curve on this one. I. Yeah, so Wally, okay, this is interesting. I was thinking about this as I was like writing as I was like going through all of these, like I don't know if Wally is my favorite Pixar movie, but if you would ask me to make like a list of my favorite movies, I think it might rank higher than my favorite Pixar movie. That's a very weird a, way to put this it. This is a yeah. weird way to put it. Like in terms of all movies, I love it. In terms of like as a specific style of Pixar movie, like it's like very still near the top and I freaking love it. Luke will occasionally, weirdly, whenever our mom comes over to watch Luke, he'll be like, let's watch Wally. Like that's his thing he wants to do with her. Our mom does not love Wally. So she's always like, oh, really? And I'm always like, no, this is fantastic. I wish I could watch Wally. I have to watch Cars over and over, <laughs> over again, <laughs> which is fine. We'll talk, I mean, Cars is good too. We'll come back to yeah. it. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think Wally is really fantastic because for one, you uses incredibly small, uh, a very limited amount of dialogue, and yet you still absolutely, like, know Wally. Like, you know what is important to him. Like, you're able to care for him. He has, like, this quirkiness about him. Uh, and I also think that it poses a lot of, like, very interesting, like, philosophical questions as it pertains to like the idea of like utopia yeah, yeah. Um, what does it mean to be alive there's yeah. like there's some environmental messaging in there there's some capitalism in there some smidge yeah you know? yeah yeah uh, there's like ai versus humanity versus wally is sort of both uh, a lot of stuff happening Ship of Theseus paradox. Ship of Theseus paradox, yeah. Which is, yeah, basically the idea there is that, like, as Wally is able to repair himself throughout the however many hundreds of years, 700, I 700. think. 700. Uh, it's like, has he gone through and replaced every single physical part of himself? And in doing that, is he still the same original Wally? Or is that part of, like, what allowed him to ascend uh, right. kind of beyond just simply being 
That's right. A little robot. Into a being 22, Wally. probably. Probably. 22! How uh, great is it going to be if we pull out Soul next? I uh, know, I know. That'd be Let's really find good. out. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Coco! Oh! Okay. Oh, okay. Boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah. What you got? I have A plus 113. Same. Oh man, here. we have the exact same going so far. We have the exact same man. so far. This one, I think it falls into a similar situation with Turning Red, where it's like, I haven't, I just haven't watched it nearly as many times as some of like the Pixar classics, just by the nature of when it came out in my life. But I love the like art style of this movie. It was like the first Pixar movie that really incorporated songs and singing into the characters themselves. Not yep. that there aren't like songs from other Pixar movies, but like just the, the, Art style in general, I just absolutely love. Like it's it's absolutely what inspired our like coffee bag. Yep, back there when we sat down with the, the graphic artist, we were like, we love Coco. Can yeah. you make it Coco like? Can you make it Coco like? Um, and they absolutely did, and I love it. CarlinBrothersCoffee.com. Try out some coffee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like. At that said, like I really enjoy it when I watch it, but it is not one that like when I go to like pick a movie to watch that I find myself like reaching for frequently. That the, I, I definitely have some of the same things where it's, it's like we, we talk about this all the time, but like whenever we're working on videos here at SCB, a lot of times you're going through and you're kind of like revisiting a specific scene or like what is his exact phrasing here? Or like, let me double check to make sure this happened the way I remember it. And so you'll be pulling up like specific stuff. And if I pull up Coco, it's one of those where I will like, I'll kind of just end up like watching the movie a right. little bit. And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is beautiful. And, and I even love how well it demonstrates like the Dia de los Muertos like holiday yeah. and sort of the way that it works, you know, and like the importance of, of remembering, right. you know, like the people who have come before you and stuff and Very the big impact. Pixar theme. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's, it, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a lot of fun. So I, I think it's good. All right. Up next. Next. Your turn. Oh, I'm up. I'm up. Okay. Oh, a bug's life. A bug's life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. Let's see. Let's see. All right. All right. Okay. What you got? I give it Anton Ego gives this two stars. Oh, I gave it incredible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, so this is your this is the first time we've deviated. First time we've deviated. Interesting. What so, about this movie does not deliver for you? Well, okay. So I like I said before, I think I love <coughs> movies that hit me square in the feels. Uh um, a Bug's Life does not quite have the emotional punch that many a Pixar movie do. And <laughs> yeah. Right. And and the other thing about this, about a Bug's Life that's really kind of interesting, is that it came out during like this was the second Pixar movie. So like yeah. this came out like right in prime time for me. And we watched it. We watched a it a lot ton we did. as a kid. Uh like I, I think even way back in the early days of Super Carlin Brothers, I made a video that was like my top ten favorite Pixar quotes or something, which was incredibly cringy by the way. <laughs> um but I think one of my favorite quotes at that point in time was like the dot saying, but it's a rock. It's a rock. Yeah. But it's a rock. Um <clears throat> And so I, I think that there's like lots of like little cute moments. I think it's very inventive. And I think for the period of time that it came out in, uh, it was a huge feat in again, like computer animated films. Oh yeah. Um, but I, I don't, this is one that I would say out of like the early Pixar days that I do reach for the least. And I would say a lot of the movies around this one are movies that reach for the most. I see. If that makes sense. It does, yeah. And I think like Toy Story or Toy Story 2 or Monsters or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. All those that sort of came out at the same time. Yeah, I agree. This one, it, uh, like I said, I think it mostly, it might be a little bit lower, except for the fact that we just watched it so many times. Like, I feel like it was like a, a bigger part of our childhood. Uh, it also does set up like a bunch of like Pixar, tra or not maybe traditions, but a lot of like things that become very Pixar-y, like it has Julia Louis-Dreyfus as one of the characters and Richard Kind, and they're both sort of like recurring Pixar voices right, as yep, well, that's which true. is kind of cool. So it's like, it does start establishing things for Pixar you right got, away. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously it's like, it's the first time A113 was like used again. Right, <laughs> yeah. Huh? Because it's used in Toy Story and right. then it's used again it's in A Bug's Life. It's got the tree, yeah. it's got the Chinese box in it. Right. It's got a trailer. There's yeah. a lot of stuff in A Bug's Life. Yeah, the tra the trailer that is ultimately in Monster Inc. Yep. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, absolutely. Yep. So lots of lots of great stuff in there. I just think that like compared to a lot of the other Pixar films, and I'm probably speaking somewhat relatively to each other, 
uh, in terms of like where I would rank that one, where I just think that so many of these other ones would classify so highly. Yeah. So anyway, up next. Next. Let's go. Soul. Oh man. Soul. Got you. I got you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Right. Yep. Got it. I yep. put it at A plus one thirteen. Same here. Same here. Same yeah. Here. Man, I cannot believe how on the same page we are. Well, I mean, we do talk about them a lot together. We do. So we there's do. That. Probably helping <laughs> define how much we like each of these Absolutely. movies. Absolutely. So very specifically, uh, Soul. I think uh, this, I'm not the first person to come to this conclusion, but it is definitely the movie. Uh, out of the Pixar lineup that is th like almost every Pixar movie is like a movie that kids can absolutely love and enjoy that parents also can appreciate and enjoy. It feels like it feels like movies made for kids that adults can love. Right. And this felt like the reverse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you definitely get into some very, very deep, heavy, philosophical, right. big time themes what and ideas. What happens when you die? My, my, on, my only real complaint about Soul is that I kind of wish they'd just let Joe go into the like the great beyond at the end. Oh, instead yeah, of, like, instead having, of him go back. having him come back to life. Like, I get it's like a happier ending, but it would have been, I still think it would have been a happy ending for him to just like accept death and have it like having helped 22, but yeah, um, I think this one fall. It's that it's that same problem. It's like I just haven't. It hasn't been around long enough for me to watch it a ton of times. And when I go to like reach for other Pixar movies, like I'm probably reaching like if I, it's like a more recent movie, it's probably like Onward or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So who who is our little counter character in Soul? Terry. Terry. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> maybe I will. I, I love. <laughs> we all do of, quote this movie a lot. We do. We yeah. do. Uh, and I love all of like the little <laughs> interactions between the the Jerry's. Yes. And Terry, <laughs> they're. Extremely funny and yeah. the incredibly abstract world um, of the great before. The great before, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's a it's a very very cool movie, and I know that it sparked a lot of discussions here in office. Mm -hmm. So there we go. I'm up. All right, next up. Let's see. Oh, the Incredibles. Yeah, well, I know exactly where this one's going. This is gonna be interesting. Oh, blam. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> oh man, I almost wish I could like put like a line through the middle. It is tricky. There are some that I felt like this is right, right on the line. Okay. Right okay. on the line. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, see, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Okay. What'd you do? I have a feeling we did the same thing. Yeah. Beyond infinity. Beyond infinity. Okay. So historically, The Incredibles has been my favorite Pixar movie. Yeah. Um, this was absolutely the one that we watched the most as kids. Yep. We ha probably could quote it just about by heart. We use the Bernie coincidence. The coincidence line. Did we say super duper dad? Oh, like at least, like daily. Yeah. Still. Yeah. There yeah. there are there are so many oh, like the little kid on the trike, like it, it's just so good. I mean it's like it's it's like a um family movie in disguise as a superhero movie. Yeah. Um, which is which is really fun. It has a lot of the emotional beats. I'm surprised it. it was even like wavering for you. Well What has made it what has made it waver? This is the thing, because I feel like I'm we, we either need to just jump ahead or come back to it, but I've had the exact same problem with a different Disney movie before, uh, which is that I think the sequel made me dislike the original uh, 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 more. I see what's happening um, here. Yep. And so for me, without getting too much into The Incredibles 2 preemptively, I think that it's it's almost, you could, you could possibly have a Toy Story 4 phenomenon going on where it was like, I, I almost am happier with where it was left to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and then like maybe like once I know more about some of the characters, like I don't know if it's like, tweaking my perception right of like now at now all. you go back and watch the first one and you're like oh but they're actually kind of like this right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it mm. maybe changes things up a little bit so i would say that incredibles is still absolutely one of my all-time favorite pixar movies but i would say uh maybe it has fallen from my coveted top spot i see well i'm yeah. curious to find out what it is then yeah yep, all right yep. well, maybe it's this one whatever we're pulling out are you ready cars cars okay so good okay okay Okay. 
from where you got it. I'm right. I put it at incredible. I put it at incredible as well. Yeah. I mean, this is probably of those like early, early Pixar movies. I, I don't, well, it's right there with The Bug's Life. I don't know. I was going to say maybe it's like my least favorite, but Luke and Nick and Nate love cars so much that it's a sort of elevating its status in my mind. Right. But it's still not like even like a to the A plus tier. Yeah. Like, I do enjoy it a lot. The opening sequence in particular where they're like on the track and you see like um, uh, the King and Chip and Lightning on there, like introducing them. Like it's a very fun race and it's like, yeah, oh yeah, this is cool. Like they get, they do a lot of really good character development very early. You immediately have a sense of who Lightning is and they like, it takes them a long time to like change his character around and they're like the, the townspeople really chip away at him very slowly. Yes. But yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah, I think like with Cars With Me, because it came out in 2006, um, I would have been like 17 at this point. Mm. And I do think that I went through a like, um, like, like that period of junior in high school through kind of probably like my college years mm -hmm. where I, I don't even know that I would have considered it like. I'm too cool for like too cool for cars too cool for like the like you know the things that I've loved as kids because yeah I mean we could talk about Harry Potter probably more than anything else on this channel and during this same phase of my life I sort of like had put that away right uh and then ultimately came back to it but so I think a big one with cars for me is that like I I didn't see it like right when it came out and I remember it was uh like our little cousin's like favorite and they were over for Thanksgiving they're like let's watch cars and I was like really like that's the one you want to watch and I remember <laughs> watching it being like Oh my gosh! How did I not like? How did I not know this was so good? Right. Um, so I think I've always been like pleasantly surprised, but uh, that I've still kind of had like that like limited, you know, ultimate relationship with it. I see. So anyway, well, just wait until your daughter grows up and she just wants to watch cars every day. There you go. There you I'm go. sure it's coming. Mm -hmm. Am I up? You're up. Okay, let's do it. Okay. All right. Oh, onward. Okay. Onward. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Or you got it. Incredible. Oh, I put it at A plus. Really, okay, yes. okay. Yeah. This one I have found myself like, we do watch cars a lot of my house. So sometimes I'll be like going to put on a, like a movie and I'll just be like, well, I'm just gonna choose something else and see if it sticks. Yeah. So I don't have to. And I find myself choosing Onward a lot as like the one like, yeah, this one, I don't mind having this one on. I would like to watch this again. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Well, I will say that Onward is absolutely one of my favorite installments of the Pixar theory. Oh, yeah. Um, it was far and away the hardest one to do because we had to figure out like how this world with two moons is gonna somehow fit into the world as we know it, like within the Pixar universe and everything. How can it all still be so human? Right, yes. <coughs> uh, yeah. And and ultimately, like the way that it it kind of dovetails with like the movie WALL-E, the idea is that like an axiom left Earth at some point in time and basically crash landed onto whatever this planet is. is. Um, and, and then they just sort of mined the technology. Exactly. Yeah. And basically what they found is that the technology was basically outweighing magic. Otherwise, I really love Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, you know, like playing off of each other here. Like, I think that they are hilarious. Uh, what, one area that I was expecting this movie to kill me as someone who like basically has been best friends with my older brother my entire life and now business partners with that person, you. Is, yeah, I understood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the kids at home. Um, I think that I was expecting it to like demolish me. Yeah. And I don't think that that quite happened. Mm. Um, like maybe my relationship uh, with you as the older brother, like you don't fit the barley mold. Sure. Like uh, in terms of so specifically as to how their dynamic is with one another. Right. Um, like he very much like incidentally fills out like father role for Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, I don't know. I mean, I think that, uh, I, I think it still had like a lot of those points, but it almost maybe even similarly to like Turning Red, it's like, this is very close to something I should have been able to relate to like on like 12 out of 10. Right. And I, m like maybe just somehow, some way, it was, it was so close to an experience I've had, but deviated enough that like I almost felt like, left out oh, somehow. somehow. Like, yeah. Like this was made for me and I didn't feel included. Yes, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Huh. It's like, well, huh. that's, yeah, yeah. It'd be like reading a horoscope and not feeling like it described you at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
<laughs> no, because normally they do. Normally yeah. they do. No matter which one you read, there crazy. You it did. It did make me want to try uh, like Dungeons and Dragons though, because I feel like that would make you appreciate this movie a lot more. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. And the gelatinous cube is probably is, like the thing is, that sticks out to me. As I the funniest. love how much they use it as this like continuous joke, but also secretly a big setup for yes. the gelatinous cube. It's like it's very well done. The gelatinous cube. It can't be. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right what's next we've got luca luca more new stuff more new stuff okay let's see here let's see here yeah okay go in there go in there with it yeah okay okay okay, okay. i landed as well okay. okay i put it incredible i put it at a plus okay yeah were yeah. you wavering between? I, I was wavering between Incredible and A plus as well, but I'm like I'm like looking at it and I'm like I would definitely rather watch it than like Turning Red or Bugs Life or Cars, and similar to like when I'm trying to find a movie that will stick with my kids that isn't Cars, uh, I will sometimes turn on Luca. So I have watched it a few times, uh, a few times more than maybe you have. That's definitely um, true. And yeah. I think what I'm noticing here is like most of my A plus movies are a lot of like the very new original idea Pixar movies. That like I feel like if these were coming out when I was a kid, they would hands down just be the be the movies. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the sense. new the next generation sort of uh, of movies that's coming out right for, now. This is like one of those things where like everybody I think solidifies their taste in music at like right. a specific age of their life. Like like for us, it's probably like that, like late '90s, early 2000s. Just like that's probably the music that will resonate with us the most for the rest of forever because it was what we listened to it during like the most formative years. Right. Um, and so I could, I could certainly, I could certainly see a lot of that. Luca, I almost felt like coming on the heels of Soul was <clears throat> basically the exact opposite situation where I felt like Soul went like as deep as Pixar goes. Right. And Luca, I felt like was. Like it was just like light and fun. And the entire premise of the movie is that there is a like spaghetti pasta triathlon. triathlon. Yeah. yeah, that's going on. But I, I think that the characters, um, Juliana. Just Julia. Julia, Julia. Yeah. Uh, I think she is hilarious. I love all of her like like exclamations. Yeah, she's very loud. I love Massimo. Yeah, the Massimo. Dad. He's very yeah. good. Santa yeah. mozzarella. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. The the villain in the movie, he's sort of over the top, too. He's a bit over the top. I cannot remember his name. Er Ercole? Ercole? Something like Ercole. that. Ercole? Ercole? Ercole, yeah. Yeah. Man, he is like, he is straight hateful, man. He's just he's not great. He's a mean kid. He's just not great. He's like, we're, yeah. It's like, you think Sid's bad? It's like, Sid's just misunderstood. This kid is mean. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> this kid, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. It's like the two different outcomes for how, like, yeah. Something can something can go. Okay, all right, I like it. Yep. Up next, we've got Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Oh my goodness! I mean, there could be no doubt. There could be no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Three, yeah. two, one. Beyond, Beyond Infinity. Infinity. I mean, this is this. I mean, if we watch The Incredibles a lot, we watch Monsters Inc. Almost as much. Almost as Almost. much. I mean, it's so funny. I quote it all the time. It is like the foundation of the Pixar theory, which is obviously a very big deal to us. Yep. Um. I just love it. I love Monsters Inc. It's such a creative idea. It's like so well executed. It feels flawless and it's very, I don't know. That's the, I, oh, yeah, it's a good movie. It, yeah, it, it really is just a like a hooting and hollering good time as it were. We do quote this one a lot, a lot, a lot. I love Mike and Sully's relationship with each other. Yeah. I just think it's, you know, it's it's adorable. Um, and, and sort of just like the whole way that like everybody fears like they are monsters who are afraid of children, right? You know, like <laughs> like that makes them so brave to go in and scare kids. Like, wow, you scare small children! Oh my god! Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. as if it's like that. Like this is a valiant thing, right? <laughs> um, and I even really, really love the fact that in the end they can ultimately turn it and uh, turn it into like laughter as like a like a fun twist. Um, additionally, I love uh, John Ratzenberger's cameo in this oh, one yeah, as the Yeti. Yeah, the Abominable Snowman. Welcome to the Himalayas! <laughs> I'm a nice guy. Snow cone? What? Hey, okay. This is... You can count this. I don't I got want. places to be. No! This is all a ruse. He's gone. 
Hello and welcome everybody back to the scenic route where we have good weather. And today's scenic route is brought to you by Honey, the easy way to save money online, whether you're on your computer or your iPhone. If you are a longtime viewer of this show, then you know that I am a big online shopper and the ability to check out from my phone directly is very important because frequently if I don't do it right away, I will just forget. And Honey makes it so easy that you can basically check out while doing a headstand. But the other thing that I'm not really great at, in addition to, you know, headstand online shopping is having a promo code available at checkout. And that's where Honey always has my back because that's exactly what they do. They are a free online shopping cart tool that will basically scour the entire internet for the best available coupon code and automatically apply it. This recently saved me pretty huge. My wife and I are in the process of opening a new business and we needed a new logo design. And the website that I was using had a huge discount available that I didn't know about, but Honey did. Which is great because honestly, savings were not even on my mind when I was at checkout. And when I ran Honey, it saved me 45%. I'm telling you, it is a straight up game changer. If you don't already have it, you could just quite literally be missing out on free savings. And by signing up, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our show at the same time. Here's the thing, guys. I would not recommend something that I don't personally use myself. And you can get it for free when you head on over to joinhoney.com slash jverse b. One more time, that's going to be joinhoney.com slash j versus b. Link is in the description down below. All right, we're back. And I hope Ben didn't go too far or else I'm gonna have to send him a very strongly worded letter. But that actually works out pretty well for today because today's other sponsor is stamps.com. Guys, if you have a small business, that inflation is not doing you any favors right now, and it's harder than ever to remain profitable, which is why cutting any possible costs matters, and mailing and shipping is a great place to start. Using stamps.com to mail and ship things gives you access to exclusive discounts and great rates at both USPS and UPS. It's such an easy way to keep more money in your pocket. Like, trust me, here at SCBHQ, we do a lot of shipping, and the cost of all those little things really can start to add up. And stamps.com has been in invaluable at making sure that we keep everything as cost efficient as possible. Seriously, the discounts are really good. You can get up to 30% off USPS and up to 86% off UPS. Plus, if you sign up with our promo code JVerseB, you'll get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, a digital scale, and free postage. Plus, no long-term commitments or contracts required. Just head over to stamps.com, click the microphone in the top right corner of the page, and enter promo code JVerseB. One more time, promo code JVerseB, free postage, digital scale, and a four-week trial at stamps. Dot com. Link is in the description down below. And I'm back. How many were there? Oh, yeah. You know what? There's. I didn't count them. I didn't count them. No, I did the ad read. What'd you do? <laughs> Me too. Oh. Hooray! All right. Here we go. What you got? I got Finding Nemo. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I know you have a strained relationship with this one, potentially. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yep. I put, I put it at A plus 113. So did I. Did you really? I did, yeah. I thought I was gonna be critical here. No, I thought you might've gone a little bit lower. I think there's nothing, I mean, to be fair, I love this movie. And again, I've watched it so many times. And when it's on, it's still funny. But I think it's like, for some reason, Finding Nemo in particular, when like we uh, maybe we were a little bit older when it came out, like high school age, and it seemed like it was received in like such overwhelming positivity in a way that like almost no other movie I ever was around my age, and it was like almost like the I hate to be the person who's like it was so popular it made me not like it, but it made me like. It made me feel like maybe like I love this movie and it seems like you guys love it somehow even more and it's making me like feel like I don't belong or something. Sure. Yeah. Like like okay. Um, not that I and I do still like it a lot. Like it's a very good movie. Um, but but like I remember that feeling a little bit from like tenth grade and like I, maybe we also like uh, have such a relationship with like aquariums. I was and gonna stuff that it feels like it has maybe lost a little bit 
of the um, magic that some of the other earliest Pixar movies hold in my brain. Yeah, that's, uh, I was gonna say like, that was a really big one for us because like growing up, like my, like, I guess, you know, father son hobby that I had was doing aquarium work and or having aquariums and, and, you know, tinkering with them and stuff. And that really transferred into like the first career that I had was, right. was you know, running an aquarium retail store and then like servicing aquariums and stuff. And so I feel like because this was like such a prominent thing in our household, it even felt like mom and dad wanted to play it like way more than like a lot of the other movies. Like, yeah. you know, I know at a period of time in our childhood, like our little brother always wanted to watch like Lion King and it was just on all the time. Mm -hmm. But this was almost like the same phenomenon, but maybe it was like the one mom and dad loved the most. Right. So like they always put it on. And it was like, I think at some point I was like, I'm just getting burnt out on it. <laughs> and then, you know, of course for such a huge part of my life, I've had like people come up to me and they're like, I want a Nemo fish. And I'm like, you mean an Ocellaris or Percula clownfish, right? Duh. Like, you know, I mean, can we, can we just get technical, Crack please? Crack a textbook, why I don't mean, you? goodness gracious. Yeah, mm. no. Um, so, I mean, I but I also think that like the, uh, the scene like with the sharks, you know, that like are, are sworn off eating fish, I think is <sighs> so funny. The tank mates in the dentist's office and the fact yeah. that they're like, not want a hakalugi. But they're still, they're you're so you're into, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> They're so into like the dental work. Yeah. Gator, Gindra, Gator Glindra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's been favoring that one lately. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. It's so very funny. It's hilarious. So I, I, I very much love it. Um, and I think that one of our early <coughs> videos we made was like uh, Marlon going through the stages of grief. <coughs> yes. Um, throughout the course of that movie. And I even think that those stages are... I have a I have a great like appreciation for them because you can like you can watch them sort of like unfold and I think yeah. that that's that's kind of neat. Um, anyway, but I would say that yeah may, maybe it's almost just been hammered too into me and otherwise it it would have had that top mark. Indeed. Trinkle, trinkle, little stuff. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Okay, what you got next? Up. 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 Okay. Okay. Right. Right. You ready? Yeah. Boom. Beyond infinity. It has to be. It has to it be. It has to be. Look, if, if for nothing more than just the first 10 minutes of this movie, which are like, if you thought, like, Pixar, like, waded into, like, really emotional things. Like, you know, in Toy Story, you had, you had Buzz falling off the railing, and it was sad. And I was like, oh, my God, he's having this moment of self-actualization, and everything he's ever thought about himself shattering, and that's sad. And then Jesse's like, I lost my owner. And you're like, why'd you have to sing such a sad song, Jesse? Well, why why yeah. did you have to do that? Yeah, you know, Sully saying goodbye to Boo. You yep. know, whatever. You got some sad moments. And then you got Up, where they kill Ellie in the most heart-wrenching, terrible way. Like, like why? The, the people at Pixar, I think, like, cracked their knuckles that <laughs> day. They were just like, let's go. Because that movie, I will say this. Like, that movie starts out, like, on such strong emotional notes. And I will say, by the end, I won't lie, it's a little off the rails. Like, you got dogs flying planes, shooting darts at a house, flying by balloons, trying to capture an exotic, rare, extinct bird. Like, things have gone way crazy by the end of the movie. It's true, it's <laughs> true. And and like, the yeah, like the dogs being able to fly the planes uh, is, is like almost one of those where it's like, I think I'll just sort of happily ignore that because I'd love right. so much of the rest of the movie. But like, I, I've had the complaint, and we'll come back to it with Finding Dory, about like, they almost like become a little bit too capable. Right. And it's like, it was cool that they could like, you know, talk and communicate, and like, you know, whatever, like right. funny little things with like quirks and stuff. And I was like, okay, the technical abilities to actually fly a plane. It's like, we've, we've maybe like, maybe right. crossed the line. I see you're leaning into like dog fighting, like the dog fighter air, like, you know, aerial combat name. You put it a little too literal. A little, just a little, just a little, a little bit, bit too literal. Bit, yeah. Uh, but Muntz is a good villain, I think. Yeah, Muntz is know. a good villain. Carl's a good hero. Kevin and Russell are hilarious. Doug, I I don't know if I love Doug as ever as much as everyone else does. He's very funny. I love but, Doug. Yeah, you love Doug. Okay, yeah. I'm like a little annoying, but, <laughs> no, but yeah. still top tier. <laughs> like I, I mean, I love this movie so much. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, good. <laughs> I just met you. Man. I love you. I love you. Uh, Derek. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? I don't know. Your oh, turn. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ready? 
Oh, Toy Story. Oh, Toy the Story. Original. Originale, baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Hmm. Okay. Let's think here. Let's think. Oh, you're hovering. Uh oh. I am hovering. Interesting. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to do it. 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 Okay. So I put it at. A plus 113. Wow, controversial. Because I, I, I put it beyond infinity. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, it's the original. It's, it's the amazing. original. Yeah. Um, that, that gets it extra points. It just does. I know. It's my third favorite Toy Story movie. Yeah, I would agree. It's also my third favorite Toy Story movie. And I think that, like I said, it's a perfect trilogy. And there you go. They're that, all great. You can guess where Toy Story 2 is going to go, too. I'll tell you right now. I'll spoil it for you. It's in the top tier <laughs> it's in the top tier, it's top tier. <laughs> um yeah so i i think that toy story like it kind of blows my mind because like it is so iconic yeah. it is like it has some of the most uh well-known characters some of the most well-known lines you know to infinity and beyond of of all of pixar of of all of like animation for that matter uh, and it was completely groundbreaking the time that it came out. That being said, there are elements of that movie that are straight up creepy. What do you mean like Sid? Well, like Sid's room. Sid's room. Is, yeah, like his toys, his creations. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, which, I mean, they obviously grow on you because they're obviously sweet. But I was six when I sure. saw it. It's a little scary. A little bit Maybe. scary. Um, and so I think that like for, for me... Um, I, I like adore it. I mean, it, it like, you know, I think the design of Buzz and Woody are two of just the greatest character designs of all time. Like, I think they're just awesome looking and perfect. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that I appreciate the Toy Story saga so much more for what is still left to come. Mm, which is to say light year. Soon. Soon. True. Soon. We got next. See, what do we got, we got some next good ones. Yeah. We got some next ones in here. Oh, look at that. Toy Story 2. Oh, so, shucks. You know, I already spoiled it. But yeah, yeah I go. put it up beyond infinity. Same here. Yeah. yeah I think it's Toy so Story good. 2 was amazing. It's the a scene, great sequel. The scene where they rebuild Woody oh, is yeah. just so it's awesome. It's so satisfying. It is. He's like, he's like so clean. He's so, so improved. Yeah, like the whole... What's fascinating about that too is that like in today's world, like with TikTok and stuff, there's like pressure washing videos and it's like, oh my God, so satisfying to see it just like get so clean right. like instantly. And this was like, this came out in like what, like 1999? Yeah. Like this was so far ahead of like the world where like delivering something satisfying right. even existed. Yeah. And yet everybody knows that scene uh, and it's so great. Jesse's song I think is like so, so good. Uh, I love all the backstory to like the Woody's roundup stuff and like the fact like Woody is struggling with that like self doubt about like his future, uh, the possibility that is presented to him by way of like. It feels like just a very unique story, right? Because most people don't have the kind of, it's like, what would a toy's dilemma truly be? And how can we get you to connect with it on like a real level? Yes. You know, like real people aren't concerned with their forever longevity because you know you will die but <laughs> sorry soul up anyway uh but like toys might not have to right yeah so they get like do it that's like it's something that you might really like have to consider or is it just more important to be there for the child in the moment which is of course obviously the right answer as per the movie i guess right as per yeah. the movie but yeah the, the opportunity for for this best case scenario for them to basically be to go and live in a museum, I think is a pretty clever uh, and, and appealing like allure for for a toy. Right. The other thing that I will say is that it came out during a period of time that sequels in general were not regarded as like even like view worthy right. in some cases. Like it was it was not common for them to be fantastic. They were typically used as like a training mechanism for animators who were still kind of like, you know, cutting their teeth. Right. It was very industry. much like a, yeah, let's let's let the next let's let the entry level people train on something, build it. And I felt like even the public just knew that. Even as a kid, I feel like I knew that. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, this is this is more of just like, yeah, this is more of the same characters. Does it really count? I don't know. Right. Like they're they're gonna go on a side quest. Right. Um but I remember getting Toy Story 2 for Christmas one year. And thinking like, oh man, like this isn't gonna be fun. And then watching it and being like, what? Well, this is amazing. Did someone tell, is it okay for a sequel to be this good? Cause it is. Cause it is. Yep. Anyway. All right, what you got? Okay, ready? Inside out. Inside out, boink. Okay. 
I know. This is easy. It's, it was so easy. Oh. Oh, what happened to me? Did you bork? No, oh, I, I think I might be okay. Hang on, hang on. Where did it go? Where did it go? You dropped it at A+. Plus. No! Goodness me! Oh, it's correct man. Correctified. Okay. Correctified. Ready? Yeah. Beyond Infinity. Beyond Infinity. If anything I was going to dethrone and be my new favorite Pixar movie, it might be Inside Out. Uh, because, I mean, it's just, it is so, like, creative and colorful and, like, well thought out. I love the way that, like, almost no matter who you are, it's so easy to, like, project yourself onto Riley and, like, relive those moments. I feel like since I've had kids, it's only gotten more emotional, pun intended. Ah. Uh, yeah. Because it's about emotions. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. That's a good yeah. one. I also feel like it uh, reframed the way that I, like, think about my own emotions in a way that, like, comes up on, like, a nearly ba day, like, daily basis. It'd be like, like, I could be having, like, a rough day or something, be like, like, anger is definitely at the wheel today. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's like that little red brick. He's definitely, he's like, he's there. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I feel like that's been, like, a really big one. I also think that this movie has got some of the biggest emotional moments. You've oh. got Bing Bong. You got Bing Bong dying. You got the family hug at the end. You got Riley crying at school, which is like, I was like, oh my God, I remember that day. Riley like, this has happened to me. Yes. I was like, oh, why are you doing this? Why? Well, no, 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 don't. Oh, no. <laughs> it's exactly. bad. Yeah, I, th I think everybody has had that moment. Yeah. Everybody has had that moment, like, where, like, their, their like, heart jumped into their throat. They couldn't talk. Right. The tears started it's, forming in your uh, eyes. And it's like the way she transitions from, like, being okay to suddenly, like, not. And it's just like, yep, that's exactly how it went. Right, yep. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just, like, yeah, you're remembering all these things. And all of a sudden, those, ha those memories are like, wait, they're gone. And it's sad oh no <laughs> would you i just thought maybe i would touch it also sadness is hilarious sadness. It's one of my favorite pixar character some of the, just, the just the casting across the board the casting, the yeah oh so perfect casting really great oh man yes inside out amazing okay mm -hmm. the good dinosaur mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna put it right here i'm gonna put it right here it's tough it's tough yeah. 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 I think it just has to be. Yeah. Okay. Where you got it? I put it at incredible. And oh. I will say this though. It would probably not be incredible for me. I typically I have I do have a like a specific soft spot for the good dinosaur. Specifically because um I I personally got to go to Pixar Studios and see like a sneak preview of the movie uh ahead of time, which was like such a big deal for like me in my like it was such a it was such a pivotal moment in my entire life it was like we've been doing youtube for a while and like getting that like invitation was like so validating in the moment like i remember like this is it like this is it i was at my regular job i was supposed to, i had been given the opportunity to be the lead marketer on the big upcoming miranda lambert concert in the coliseum wow yeah yeah and i was like i'm going to pixar and like if they like if they had like told me like well if you do that you're fired i was gonna be like well too bad <laughs> like <laughs> i'm not not going right like, i'll be back in time for the concert it's going to be close but i will be i'm not missing it so like it was like this this is the future and this is like i know it now like i am so sure so good dinosaur will always get a few extra points in my book and the animation in the movie itself is also uh, extremely amazing, and I don't think has even been matched by any movie since it, which is saying something. But they also like reworked this movie, like for like it got in, like stuck in workshop for a very long time. Yeah, and I feel like in the meantime, the animators were like, I guess they'll just keep improving the nature. I don't know. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> I don't yeah. really know. They haven't fixed the story yet, so these leaves are gonna look amazing, and yeah. they do. Um, so there's that. The story itself, uh, only okay. Animation, amazing. Personal connection to it, amazing. So there you go, incredible. There, nah, <laughs> see, uh, I mean, you know, yeah. while, while I do recognize that that was a very big thing, yeah. uh, I put it at Cars 2. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. I would say Good Dinosaur is one of my least favorites. Mm. And I, I think that probably part of it was that like when I found out that Pixar was doing a dinosaur movie, I was so excited mm. i was like oh my gosh like you can't mess it up you it's can't like mess it's, it up. it's pixar it's dinosaurs it looks beautiful it's coming out right after inside out yeah and then it was just like no 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 yeah. no 
Yeah, just like, I don't know, like Arlo, I think like maybe annoys me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, come on, like man up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's just, he's just, I don't know. He just, he's just a tad sad. Yeah, um, a little bit. And I don't know. I felt like the, they were going for this juxtaposition by having extremely cartoonized uh, looking dinosaurs in a hyper realistic looking world. And I think that there's a way that that could have worked, but I don't think it's it's ultimately what we got. Mm. Um, that being said, there are some really sad moments in it. Uh, there are some really good moments, like when uh, Arlo and what's he called Spot Spot are like doing the sticks in the sand. Like I think that's a pretty mm, powerful moment. That is a good one. Um, so there there are like little little things where I think stuff shines through, but. It, it's like so many other problems where you discover that like the behind the scenes was kind of just like convoluted. It, it's like, I feel that when I watch it, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the star Wars, like sequel trilogy. It's like you, you can tell stuff was going on. Right. It's, it's like, like, it's like each individual like scene they have, I feel like is pretty good, but like they don't stitch together in this really like nice way. Right. Yeah. Right. So anyway, that's anyway. where that's that. Anyway. Here we go. Okay. Next up, we got Cars 2. Wow. So there's there's really only there's really only one. There's really only one explanation one here. Explanation I put here, it so. at Cars 2. I put it at Cars 2. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing about Cars and Cars <clears throat> 2 is that I actually genuinely love the character of Mater. Mm-hmm. I think that he is probably one of my favorite parts about Cars 1. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like what happened was it was almost like being given ice cream for dinner every night for like a week. You know, it's like, it's like too much of a good thing mm-hmm. is what they did with Cars 2. Because they really like had Mater go and have like a huge role. He's effectively like the main character of Cars 2. And it's, I don't know, like Lightning still just needs to be the main character. Right. Like I think, I think that's maybe the issue. It's like, like light it's like i'm much more interested in lightning especially after cars one and like the opening of cars 2 is really fun like you have finn mcmissile doing like the james bond secret agent stuff on the base and they have all this cool like spy gadgetry and he's doing the thing and it's like that was really fun i'm into it i'm into it all right and then you're like back to mater and he's just sort of like fumbling backwards into spy life on accident and kind of getting stuff done and all of a sudden has this tremendous knowledge about every car that was ever made ever it's like well you still you've been living in this small town in the middle of nowhere how would you know that much about anything yeah Yeah, it's like so i don't know i would have much rather just watched them do the grand prix (laughs) yeah i'm like i want to see if lightning is gonna beat francesco like let's go and then they're like, no, no, we don't care about racing. Racing's not what race car movies are about. Don't be ridiculous. So whatever, whatever. you know, That's it's cool. all right. It's not like every now and then I do switch between Cars and Cars 3 a lot with my own children. And like Cars 2 will pop up every now and then because they'll like see it and be like, that one! And they'll be like, okay, I guess. And it's not like unenjoyable to have on, but it's certainly not the one I reach for that I, much. The only other thing I'll say here is that I feel like sometimes it's a bit of a punching bag. Yeah. Uh, for, because everybody sort of like has come to the conclusion uh, together about this this particular movie. So like, it's the type of thing where like, I don't ever want it to be like falling into the space of negativity. Right. It's just sort of like, it just is the case that it's like not the one that I love. Sure. I never leak, I never leak, I never leak. All right, what do we got here? Cars 3. Cars 3. Cars 3. Real. I will give Cars 3. Oh, he's hovering. It's a tricky one. Well... Where's it gonna go, bro? This one's hard. It is hard. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. All yeah. right, you ready? Yeah. I gave it. Anton Eco gives us two stars. Oh, I put it at Incredible. I that was what I was torn between. Yeah. So I was torn between. Okay, you talked earlier about how you thought maybe The Incredibles two lessened The Incredibles one for you. I feel like Cars three upped Cars one for me. Cars three, as I like to call it, the real Cars two. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, what I will say about Cars 3 is that uh, we had a 
blast mm -hmm. pulling apart the trailers for this one as it was yeah. coming out. And that scene where uh, Lightning is like just tumbling oh, in is, space. That is just one of the best trailers. I mean, it's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. Yeah. I mean, you're just like, Whoa. what? Like they just like went there. The other big thing was that like when it came down to the end, I ultimately really felt like Cruz should have just started the race. R yeah, I mean, like Lightning should have gotten to the conclusion a little bit sooner. Right, and, yeah. it, and it felt like, you know, like really what should have happened is like Lightning is just her <laughs> crew chief for the whole final race. And then you get to watch her like bust out all of the skills that she learned in the same way that like Lightning was kind of like learning how to like, you know, slide yeah. and drift from like Doc in the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I don't know. I don't know that it really feels like that ultimately comes through in the end. She I'm, only races the last lap, right? No, it's not the last lap. It's like the last half of the race. Is okay, okay. Yeah. When you watch it right next to Cars 1, like in quick succession, it, it like it really is like the true successor to Cars One. Like there's so many like mirrored like things they do oh, throughout it, which is it's like I wouldn't notice it if, if it weren't for the fact that my kids just love these movies so much. But like even right away, like you have the big race at the beginning, which is exactly how Cars One opens up, and like except at this time, Lightning crashes hard and is out, and instead of being you know the young rookie, he's the old veteran this time. And then they have the montage where Mac is driving across the country and there's some catchy song playing but in cars one you'll know like you don't even notice that they're just seeing a life as a highway and you're like oh look at all the scenery but it's like what they're showing you on the highway the whole time is that you're driving on the interstate and you're watching all the different spots where the interstate is cut through the land which ends up being this like big thing um for radiator springs but then if you watch um cars three they have the same exact montage but they go out of their way to make sure mac is like never on the interstate he's oh, like always going through like like highways that go through the mountains and they're really going with the land and stuff. It's like very cool. That the way is they have cool. Done that. Okay. Like it is like, it shows lightning's growth in a very like hard to notice way. Cause the movies came out in a very, um, like far apart out. Yeah. way. But like there, there's a lot of that happening too, like throughout the whole movie. Um, and like all the doc huds and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. It, some of the stuff feels a little tacked on. Like they really wanted to get in like the history of NASCAR and stuff. Right. And some of that stuff is pretty cool. Cause there were like, you know, um, people of color and women who were like trying to get into the racetracks and they didn't want them on and they were like breaking in and doing it and breaking the rules and stuff. So that's cool stuff, but. Yeah, right, that's fine. Um, okay, I, you know what? I will even move it up. Oh. I think you've convinced me. All right, there you, you go, Cars me. 3. How about it? Yeah. How about it? Okay, cool. who do we got next? What do we got? Good sell, good sell. Well, thank you, yeah. You've clearly you spent think? some time Luke with Cars and Nick 3. And Nick. Yeah, it's been yeah. a lot. Monsters You. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Crud buckets. There we go. Um, okay, well, <laughs> I'm sort of back to the same. I gave it Anton Ego yeah. gives this two stars. I gave it Anton Ego gives this two stars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, it's, it's fun. Like it, in it, it has, it, I would say uh, an accolade that I will give it is that it has one of my all time favorite stills from all of Pixar, mm. uh, which is when Mike and Sully are like looking out at the lake at yes. night. Like, sitting at the lake. Yeah, oh. I would just have that like framed in yes. my house if given the option. Yeah. Fantastic, still. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I just never really get like that attached to the narrative. I feel otherwise. like they really ham up the jockiness of Sully at school in a way that just like feels unbelievable or like, like, blatantly ignorant of like Mike or whatever. Like it doesn't feel like the same seller you meet in Monsters Inc. He's just like, so it takes him so long to like come around on it. And he's just like treating Mike so poorly. Or, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like Sully as much like Mike. I can see you have always been kind of that guy. Um, like the way he ends up in Monsters Inc. But yeah, it's like, I, I think even around my notes, like it's fine. It's good. I don't, Hate it or anything. Oh but yeah, of course. I certainly am not like reaching for it either. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. We can leave it there. So, okay. What do you got? What's next? All right. Let's see. We got some. We got some interesting ones left on here. Brave. Brave. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Where you got it? I have it at Anton Ego gives us two stars. <laughs> okay. So I get. I put it at incredible. Um, yeah. But I think that I would. I'd probably hover between those two. Um, Brave is a movie that I actually think is a lot more beautiful than anybody ever gives it credit for. Um, I think like the Scottish themes and imagery are all 
really, really cool. And I think Merida is just like awesome. Like when she like walks out and just, like is just dropping the arrows like yeah. one after the other after the other. It's like that is that is like ridiculously cool. Um, but I think what what always kind of throws me about this particular movie is that like it's definitely the story of like her relationship with her mother. Right. Um, but they've also included like Mordu into the equation. Yeah, it just feels like they started out with an idea about this like warrior princess who's gonna go fight a bear. And they were like, that sounds awesome, let's do that. And then they like started writing it and it went in a different direction and it just didn't like maybe make as much sense to carry that sentiment forward. But they were like, no, but that's what we wanted to do. So let's just keep it in there anyway. Right, like Mordu is like a cool character design maybe. Yeah. So it's like, well, well, we'll leave that. But it's, it's just odd because it's like all of a sudden at the end you kind of have this like conflict like with the fourth brother who sort of like took a different path and right um it's like well i don't know what he had to do with merida very much at all he just sort of shows up to be a bad guy at the end right like it almost yeah. feels like what should have happened is the it should have been the case that like maybe merida um instead of like resisting like sort of this like marriage proposal thing that's being placed before her is almost trying to like break away like from the kingdom entirely or something like mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be like a cautionary tale right because i mean you have the four brothers and like the one who's leaving and then you have like the four clans in the present yeah and like merit is the one who's like i don't want to do this right so it's like is she more do is that like what you're supposed to get but it's like i never really it doesn't really ever feel like she's evil in that sort of or like power hungry in that sort of way no not at all yeah yeah like i, I never associate anything between mordu and merida as like characters that were on the same path yeah their names are similar though they are they are similar this also just falls into that same category to me with like the like turning red where it's like i like like i don't dislike the movie i enjoy watching it but it's like it, this is very clearly like a mother daughter kind of story and it's uh -huh. like something i can't relate to it but like we don't even have sisters that's, you know? that's true <laughs> yeah that's true too yeah so maybe maybe we didn't get to witness the uh mother daughter relationship in in full force yeah um, anyway so there we go. It's sorry. It's like again, I don't dislike the movie. It's just it's certainly not one I'm reaching for that often. There you go. Movie number next. Movie number next. Let's see. We've got Finding Dory. Okay. Man, this feels this feels. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I gave it Anton Ego gives us two stars. Same. Yeah. But somehow they're like coming out of the bucket in a weird order, but I've had three in a row in that category. I know. I, I know. know. I feel like we've we've definitely filled in like the bottom brackets a little bit. A um, little bit more here towards the end. I will say there are some great moments in uh, Finding Dory. I love all of Baby Dory. <laughs> yes. She's absolutely adorable. Like we see the undertow, we say, let's go. go. <laughs> No, 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 don't do that. Um, it's uh, it's still good. It doesn't quite have the same like adventure that Finding Nemo had where it's like Marlin and Dory crossing the sea. Like they cross the ocean in like 10 seconds. Yeah. And then you're just at the, you know, marine life aquarium with Sigourney Weaver for the rest of the movie, which is fine, you know, uh, but, and you know, you've got some of the fun new characters, but the movie, similarly, it's just like, by the end, we are like off the rails where Dory and Hank are driving a truck off a cliff. And, right, you yeah, know, it's yeah. like, what is happening in this movie? And yeah, and uh, who's our beluga whale? Um, Phil Dunphy. Yeah, Phil, yeah, yeah, voiced by Phil Dunphy from Modern Family. Um, he, he's like, he's got this like, you know, sonar locating system that's just a little OP. Yeah, you know, a little it's bit. Like, it's like, okay, he can just sort of see everything. Right. Um, and I don't know. I mean, there's there's lots of like little little like cute things about it, uh, and, and it's sort of like you know, it's a it's a wild ride. Yeah. Uh, the what is it? The fire? What is the squid that we see in there? Oh, the bioluminescent one. Yeah. yeah. That, that's really getting, beautiful. That is cool. It's really cool looking. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, I think really the big win here is Baby Dory. <laughs> Baby Dory is the big win. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Okay. What you got next? All right. Let's see. We've got. Ratatouille! 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 Okay. Let's, Bam. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah? All right, I'm gonna drop it at Incredible. I put it at A+. Okay. Myself. 
This is one I know a lot of people like low key want to put Ratatouille as like the top most artistic best thing Pixar's ever made, and like people just don't don't appreciate. It. And it's like I get it, maybe maybe that's true. I don't know. Um, for me, I don't. I wouldn't reach for it above anything I have on Beyond Infinity, but I do like it, and it has grown on me over the years. I would say. Uh, upon first viewing, I would have had it a lot lower, and it has climbed the ranks for me. Yeah, but. I, I certainly agree with that. Like, I, I think, um, like, I know that the people who I've, like, read their work about, like, Pixar films and stuff, I know that, like, Ratatouille is very, very high. And, and this is, like, sort of one of those things where I'm like, maybe my mind isn't, like, sophisticated enough to understand what makes it like so truly special mm -hmm. um i and and like so many of the other ones it's like i mean i love the story i would absolutely like love to sit down and watch this movie but it definitely yeah i would agree it, it doesn't really like out compete uh anything that i have in the tears above sure you know i would probably pick those to watch first right yeah so there you go there you go okay we're getting close yeah, two now more oh toy story four toy story four Oh man, I might be making people mad with this one. I'm still going here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to decide. I wouldn't put it there. Ah, uh, maybe. Mm. Mm. It's tricky. This one's very on the line for me. I put it at A plus. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, you're a lot higher. Than oh, okay, we're putting it at anti ego gives us two stars. Oh, so you're way down. I am way, way down, down on the LTS four. I am way down on Toy Star four. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know. I I was really between that and just an incredible. So I'm like. I think I would rather watch it than most of the movies I have down in Incredible, but it's certainly not as good as the first three. But I don't know. I'm like, I'm not sure I would want to watch it as much as the other movies I have on A plus either. I so, see. I love I love Forky, which I think was just a yeah. feat that they made us love a plastic utensil. Yeah. Uh, and I love Duke Kaboom. I think he's just kind of hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really loved the relationship between Bo and Woody right. in it. Uh, and I also don't like the fact that, like, it felt like the rest of the toys that we've known and love are just sort of, like, left behind. Yeah, you it's know? really just focuses way, way, way more on Woody and Bo. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a Toy Story movie as much as the other three. Like, we've said this before. Like, I, I feel like they should have just called it Woody. Yeah. And that would have been, like... I don't know. I feel like that would have made me like it better. But it's like you're calling it a Toy Story movie. It's really like the other characters are just sort of there. Like Buzz sort of enters the fray a little bit, but I don't even like Jesse stays back at the. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like even Jesse's not that big a character in this one. It's really just down to like Woody and Bo for the most part, and then you've got like yeah, Duke's there and Gabby's there and stuff. So I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't quite deliver the same feels to me as Toy Story three did. Right, and and we talked about it with Toy Story two, where like this this idea of like getting to go and like live in a museum, like you could sort of see like the general appeal is that like you as a toy would be very well protected and not ever damaged, uh, and also continuously fueled by love from the people who come through every single day, which is amazing. Um, and it's like it's like yeah, like I get, I get why a toy would want that. With with Toy Story four, it's kind of like. Is it the ultimate goal of a toy to be able to pair other toys with children? Like, it, right. Like, it, cause it kind of feels like that's like what they really like. That, that's like what they do in the end. Right. Um, and is a carnival the best place to do that? Like, yeah. is, is that where most people find their most favorite toy? <laughs> oh, I know. Like heads up you guys, carnival toys, not that great. <laughs> not that great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially compared to a rare Sheriff Woody doll. Exactly, I know, right? Yeah. yeah so prize. anyway, that's that's usually what, like, I, and and the other thing that I would say Toy Story Four has against it for me is that I just <laughs> think they could have ended at three. Yeah, and that's the other thing that they could have ended at three. Like that, like th there are like you have Lightyear coming up soon, which is obviously still like under the Toy Story umbrella. Yeah. Like, whether or not you want to like have the entire Pixar universe be a thing, Lightyear still has to exist, at least in the Toy Story universe, because it's right. what Buzz is based on. Right. So in what capacity he's based on him, we shall have to see. Shall have to see. Indeed, Which leaves us with, with none other than Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2! Incredible. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I hate, that, I hate that we got so like back heavy here. Um, however, 
I also have to put it at Anton Ego. Yeah, that's where stars. I put it too. It's like I, I, it's like again, like this is such a weird ranking thing because like it's Pixar really just doesn't miss that much. So like on like a scale of one to ten, we're like ranking a bunch of like six and ups. Yeah. You know, oh sure, more sure, or sure. Less. Like yeah. everything's still good, but like you're right. It's like it's it's certainly not the same as Incredibles, one. By any means, there's some very creative fight scenes, and like they let the kids like do a lot more, and like Violet and Dash do uh, are very good. But like the the hypnogoggles, like they're just like a little op and stuff. Like I do like the screen slaver villain idea. My favorite part of this movie is when uh, Elastigirl is like swinging through the city, and you're like hearing screen slavers like monologue, monologue. Yeah. because like what's really interesting about it is that screenslaver is talking about how everyone's addicted to screens and stuff and like it, but like what's on the screen as he's saying it is like so interesting and compelling like the way she's flying through the city that you don't even hear what he what what screenslaver is saying it's like that's exactly the point yeah and it's like yeah. it's very sneaky and well done it's like this like meta experience so i do really like how they did that particular scene i like that they gave you know elastigirl the spotlight and stuff but um overall not didn't really deliver like they introduced a ton of other superheroes which is like fun but not i don't i don't know it's yeah it's it's a fine line to walk between like how creative and inventive and fun can we get with it and at what point in time is it just muddying the waters a little bit mm -hmm. and i didn't feel like all of the new character designs that we got were like super great uh like in like what their specific like abilities were yeah like most of the other superheroes they introduced are just very one note they have this power they use it that's it yeah and then the other thing is you've got like, a lot of stuff happening on this like boat at the end and i feel like my spatial awareness of the boat was just like kind of confused it's like i don't really know where anybody is relative to anybody else like you sort of all just like in like sort of enclosed hallways so like it, it mm -hmm. feels like very i don't know Right. Boxed in. Yeah. Um, so, and, and like I've said before, I feel like there was a, the, a fair bit of Incredibles 2 that made me sort of like less enchanted with Incredibles 1. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're going to step out of the universe a little bit, it sort of like plays with your emotions where it's like, oh man, like this is this like my favorite one. And, and then I ultimately was kind of like a little lukewarm about it. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I think that yours is a lot prettier Mine's than mine. Mine's much more like just a stair step. Yeah. yeah mine is sort yours of like, is like... Yeah, I got a weird chunky... Uh, ups and downs to it it is it's is yeah. really it's really kind of funny because it's almost like i've got like my like my my good stack and then like my bad stack and they're almost shaped exactly the same yeah you're right yeah interesting not that any of them are bad not that any of them. yeah exactly but we would love to see what you guys final tier list looks like so if you want to go fill out your own tier list again there is a description down below please let us know just how wrong or even better how totally right and how much you agree with us uh, you do down in the towel section below. Also, if you'd really like to show us uh, what you came up with, like what your tier list ultimately looked like, one of the best ways to participate in the Super Carlin Brothers community is going to be our Discord over on our Patreon server, which you can check out at the $3 tier at patreon.com slash Super Carlin Brothers. Yeah, Ben and I would love to discuss with you all of your various opinions about Pixar movies. The Discord is super fun. It is a very active community in there, and uh, we are trying to be in there as much as possible right now so uh come say hi link in the description down below but guys as always thank you so much for watching today's video don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and if you'd like to see how turning red fits into the greater pixar theory you can check out this video right here but otherwise until next time bye, bye.